Hello everybody, welcome to another video. Today is the 3rd of July, and today we're going to be talking about the front line. We're also going to be discussing the situation regarding the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant very briefly. I do intend to do a full video about the entire saga over there at a later date, but for now we're just going to talk about the most important parts and also talking about the entire Kafka reservoir in the Zaporozhye region and some potential Ukrainian activities around the reservoir that is dried up. We're going to discuss all of that. Let's begin by looking at the Zaporozhye front, where I yet again have to talk about Piatti Khatki. We've been talking about it basically in every single video now, with the gist of the situation being that the 128th Mountain Assault Brigade has yet again attacked in the direction of this town. Look, the Russians don't control it, but the Ukrainians do not have a solid control over this town either. And so today they tried sending in some of their assault detachments to try to take over the town yet again, but they were repulsed by the Russian artillery and aviation. Again, let me remind you guys that this entire area over here, this entire valley, which spans from like Lopkove to Piatikatki, which is about a three mile stretch of land that Ukrainians are trying to solidify control over. It's all on a valley in comparison to the heights that the Russians control further to the south and to the west, to the east in all directions. And so it's very difficult to hold on to positions over there in this uh, general box over here. And so that's why we're hearing of all of these failed Ukrainian assaults in that direction. The Ukrainians have also yet again launched assaults in the direction of Robotinye. We talked about how previously the Ukrainians were able to advance about 150 meters towards Robotinye in this region over here. I'll mark it with this box over here. This is generally where the fighting occurred. And the Ukrainians at most took over like a very small area with this entire tree line in this general direction. The specific distance is very hard to measure. The 150 meter number is just an estimate. But now we know that the 1430th Regiment of the Russian forces was able to reverse the Ukrainian gains in this area and took back all of the Ukrainian positions, including the forest belt that the Ukrainians had taken over uh, yesterday in their assaults. So that would be this area. The Russians reestablished control over this general square over here. It's hard to pinpoint exactly where, but there are different trench lines adjacent to these bush lines where the Russians have been able to secure control again. And we know that the Ukrainians were trying to attack in the direction of Robotinia through these forests. And these forests that I'm talking about run through here. It gives you cover as you try to advance into the town of Robotinia from the north. And you can see the distance from the Ukrainian lines to Robotinia at the moment is about 1.6 miles, maybe 1.8, around that amount. So it's not too far away, but it's just that the Russians do have a lot of positions in these bush lines as well. And they also have control of the heights overlooking some of the valleys and fields that the Ukrainians have under their control, which is making it harder for the Ukrainians to actually take a step towards Robotinia, which is why you're seeing all of these issues. So now the Ukrainians they have begun evacuating their wounded and their killed from the battlefield around Robotine and to the north of it. And so they're using their armored vehicles and that's where the evacuations are taking place, being transported using these vehicles. With vehicles, they are trying to use the forest belts as concealment from the Russian artillery as they make their way for, to the front line and then back all the way to like Novodanilivka or all the way to Orkiv in order to treat the wounded and bury the dead. And so let's move on to the most interesting part of the Zaporozhye slash Donetsk front today, which is the Velika Novoselka axis. And in this direction, we do have reports that the Ukrainians conducted some troop rotations and they beefed up the manpower of certain units on the front line, specifically around the town of Levadne. So in this general region, the 31st and the 36th Brigades, they were given additional reinforcements that were moved to the front line around this town. 31st Brigade, this is the 31st Brigade, and then 36th, if I can find it over here for you guys, it's this unit over here, 36th Marine Brigade. And so they also have some of their units located around the Vladne. Some of them are obviously in different parts of the front line but they have been sent to here and they're trying to fortify some of their four positions that are to the south east of Levadne. So, you know, in the about one mile span in between the line of contact 
in the town of Levadne, where you do have some of these forest lines, there's also a cemetery. So in that area, the Ukrainians are beefing up their fortifications and trying to set up strongholds so then they could eventually push in the direction of Prutnia. I've been talking about that for a while because that's a big part of Ukraine's plans going forward with the counteroffensive. And so in this area, we also have reports that the 72nd Brigade of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, which is located in Vukladar, they moved over one of their artillery battalions in the direction of uh, generally the Velika Novosilka axis in the Russian salient. And so what this indicates to us is that the Ukrainians are preparing for an increase in artillery barrages in the direction of Russia positions around Prutinia. And so that's why they're moving in the 72nd Brigade. And that will aid in Ukrainian advances from their current lines to Prutinia. And from Levadne, the distance is about two miles until Prutinia. It's not that big of a distance. And it's certainly within the range of, you know, shorter range shelling and mortars, for instance, from basically all directions. But let's move to a different axis of attack in this region. So the Ukrainians did not actually conduct any offensive operations in the direction of Storomayorske today. They mainly just worked on fortifying their own positions and evacuating the killed and the wounded who were sent with their armored vehicles back to Velika Novosilka, where they probably originally congregated and now they're being treated or buried. And so the Ukrainians, they did try to beef up some of their defenses around the forest belts to the northwest of Stormayorske because a lot of those were targeted in Russian artillery and airstrikes in recent days. And so the squares that I'm going over right now, that's generally where Russia hits. These are some key Ukrainian positions that have been established over the past few weeks that are allowing them to set up forward firing positions and sometimes sleep in those areas. So then they could eventually begin to probe into the town of Stormayorske itself. And so a lot of those positions have been weakened today due to Russian artillery and aviation strikes. And so now the Ukrainians are trying to rebuild some of that. And the units that were targeted in these Russian strikes include the 35th Marine Brigade, which we have uh, over here, and the 128th Territorial Defense Brigade, which is located over here. I added in a whole bunch of units today and I tried to be as accurate as I could with their locations. Obviously, not all units are monolithic in their location. They're sometimes spread out, which is why I try to not just include brigades, but also battalions wherever I know they're located. And also, I added in a whole bunch of drone units, not just in Veliko Novosilka, but in Orkiv, Kherson, uh, Piatikatki, that entire area. So give it a look if you're interested in seeing the units. But anyway, let's move on. So the Ukrainians, they also moved some of the assault detachments of the 35th Brigade to the front line around these fortified positions that I was talking about before. And they also moved in their armored vehicles two crews of Javelin ATGMs. And they also moved men from the 110th Territorial Defense Brigade, which is the unit uh, over here. 110th Territorial Defense Battalion, actually. My bad. And so that's really in terms of Zaporozhye. We still don't have any sort of major Ukrainian movement, but there's a lot of rumors about that, about a change due to the NATO summit that's going to be occurring from the 11th to the 12th of July. And so we're gonna get into that and how it relates to the Zaporozhye nuclear power plant 